That, ladies and gentlemen, is none other than Taylor Swift, winner of 11 Grammy Awards and one of the most iconic musical artists of her time. Taylor Swift truly made her mark in the world of 21st century pop culture, and her new album, Midnights, was just released last month with a US tour in the works. It will surely get a lot of Swifties excited, huh? Just like the rest of us, Taylor Swift is an enthusiastic foodie and made her love of food crystal clear throughout her career. And boy, she has wonderful tastes! Welcome to Foodie Legends, your go-to source for the best foods to eat around the world and their history. Today, we'll get to learn how to eat like Taylor Swift and maybe you can try cooking these dishes at home as well. Taylor Swift likes some hearty Indian dishes. In an interview with Elle in 2019, Taylor confesses that she likes to cook Mughlai chicken. It is a North Indian style curry dish that has its roots in the Mughal Empire. Mughlai is a very rich and delicious dish with a kick, which can help you start writing a song, maybe. You need the following ingredients to prepare the Swift favorite. One half kilogram of chicken, sliced to medium-sized pieces. Three tablespoons of ghee. Ten pieces of cashew nuts. Four pieces of large onions, finely chopped. Three green chilies. Two cardamom pods. Three cloves, bay leaf. One half teaspoon of chili powder. 1 half teaspoon of turmeric powder 1 teaspoon of coriander powder 1 inch of cinnamon stick 2 tablespoons of cream 1 half teaspoon of garam masala and salt for seasoning Start first by soaking your cashew nuts in hot water for 10 minutes Rub the chicken with turmeric powder and set both aside for the meantime, heat a tablespoon of ghee in the pan and sauté your onions. Reduce the heat, letting the onions cook until it is soft and caramelized. Stir it from time to time to prevent burning. This process may take 20 minutes or so. Now, once the onions are caramelized, transfer it to a food processor with the soaked cashew nuts, ginger, garlic cloves, green chilies, and one-fourth cup of water. Grind the entire thing until it becomes a paste. For the meantime, let's go back to the pan. Heat the remaining ghee and add the cinnamon, cardamom pods, cloves, and a bay leaf. Sauté it for a minute, then add the paste, stirring it in medium-high heat for four to seven minutes. Pour in your coriander powder, garam masala, and salt. Continue sautéing it for another 2 minutes and finally, you can add the chicken, followed by 1 fourth cup of water. Stir it with the other ingredients, then cover it and let it cook for 20 minutes. Once it develops a gravy-like consistency, stir in the cream and switch the heat off. Let it rest for a while and you can serve your Mughlai chicken over rice or eat it with paratha. Now, that's a dish Taylor would love. Craving for crepes? Apparently, Taylor does too. A good item for breakfast or random midnight snack. Our girl likes to cook one with some meat slices. Something that she told to an interview during the Red and Speak Now era. Buckwheat is gluten-free and non-allergenic, which can be the reason why Taylor prefers this type of crepe. To cook buckwheat crepes, you need 1 half cup of all-purpose flour 1 half cup of buckwheat flour 5 large eggs 1 teaspoon of salt 5 tablespoons of melted butter 1 and 3 4 cups of whole milk 1 4 cup of shaved parmesan cheese 4 slices of maple honey ham In a bowl, mix the all-purpose and buckwheat flour together with the salt. 
Add the milk, 2 tablespoons of butter, and 2 eggs. Whisk it until the mixture turns smooth. Cover the batter with plastic wrap and fridge it for 4 to 8 hours. In your stove, heat a skillet to medium heat, adding 1 half teaspoon of melted butter, spreading it over the skillet surface. Pour 1 fourth cup of the batter on the skillet, spreading it evenly so that it'll be thin and even. Cook it for 1 minute and carefully flip it over, cooking the other side for 20 seconds. Just repeat the process until you finish cooking all of the batter. You can put your crepes in an oven preheated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit while you're cooking the rest of the batch and the meat to keep them warm, but that is optional. Meanwhile, cook your ham on a separate skillet, setting it aside once cooked and followed by the rest of the eggs, fried in half teaspoon of melted butter. Now lay your crepe flat on a plate, topping it with your ham. Sprinkle some Parmesan cheese and roll the crepe. Then to finish it, top the entire thing with a fried egg. And voila! That's a plate of buckwheat crepes for a favorite artist. Taylor Swift loves three things. Flannels, cats, and baking. Yeah, Taylor really loves baking and that's kinda obvious. That's just her vibe, isn't it? Chai cookies are one of Taylor Swift's favorite baked goods. And for a good reason. You'll see why. But first, the ingredients. 1 half cup unsalted butter at room temperature. 1 half cup of vegetable oil. Granulated sugar. 1 half cup of powdered sugar. 1 teaspoon of ground cinnamon. 1 and 1 half teaspoons of ground ginger. 1 fourth teaspoon of ground nutmeg. 1 fourth teaspoon of ground cardamom. 1 8 teaspoon of ground cloves, a pinch of freshly cracked black pepper, 1 large egg, 2 teaspoons vanilla extract, 2 cups of all purpose flour, 3 4 teaspoon of baking soda, 1 half teaspoon of kosher salt, and last but not the least, cinnamon sugar for rolling. For the glaze, we need 1 and a half cups of powdered sugar, ground nutmeg. 3 tablespoons of whole milk. Before doing anything, don't forget to preheat the oven to 250 degrees Fahrenheit, lining your baking sheet with parchment paper. Now get a mixer fitted with a paddle attachment to beat the butter in a large bowl, going at it on a medium speed for 1 minute. Add your vegetable oil, followed by the granulated and powdered sugar, as well as all of the spices. Just continue on beating it, then add the egg and vanilla, continuing the medium speed beating until it incorporates. At this point, you can start stirring in the flour, baking soda, and salt, setting the mixer on low. Now you have your dough, which will be soft and refrigerated for one hour. And we are ready to shape it. For large cookies, Take two spoonfuls of the cookie dough to the baking sheet, about two inches apart. For smaller cookies, a tablespoon will do. With your fingers or palm, evenly press the dough to one-fourth inch thickness, then roll it in your cinnamon sugar. Bake the large cookies for 12 to 14 minutes and 8 to 10 minutes for the smaller ones. Once baked, let the cookies cool down on the sheet before transferring it to the racks for the final cool down. At this point, whisk all of the ingredients for the glaze in a medium sized mixing bowl until it becomes thick but still spreadable. Spread your cookies and glaze it with your mixture, sprinkling it with a bit of nutmeg just to make it fancier. What a beauty! It would be a shame not to end this episode without a beverage of some sort. Taylor Swift loves her alcohol. She likes a glass of wine or two, which we believe is a great way to loosen up all of those creative and poetic words and melodies. In the Vogue 703 questions, Taylor admitted that she likes vodka diet coke. 
It's rather strange, isn't it? But don't judge it if you haven't tried it yet. Here's how you can make a vodka diet coke. You'll need the following. Vodka. Diet coke. One lime wedge. Measure 50 milliliters of vodka and pour it to a tall glass filled with ice cubes. And then simply add diet coke. Slice a lime and get a wedge, squeezing it over the glass and drop it to the glass to be served. Very easy. Thanks again for tuning in with us here today at Foodie Legends for our latest episode. I hope you enjoyed some of the recipes that Taylor Swift loves to cook. And hopefully, you can try it at your home. Do you know other dishes that our favorite singer likes as well? Drinks perhaps? Feel free to share it in the comment section. Like this video and click the subscribe button for more delicious content every week. You guys are awesome. Thanks again for watching. See you on the next one.